Good morning YouTube. Welcome to another installment in my Cutting the Cable video series. This is how I cut the cable and went off the grid for my TV reception. For a year I researched how I could get the TV content I wanted without paying hundreds of dollars for junk I didn't watch. I set up this HD TV antenna and found I could pick up about 95 stations in excellent digital TV quality. There's about 75 feet of coax from the antenna to the distribution point inside my house. I added this medium gain preamplifier to boost the signal into the house. While not really required, I do have a couple of distant stations that fade in and out, and the preamp seems to help with those. I can pick up stations from 20 to over 100 miles distant. I'll include links to the equipment used in the video description below. Let's climb up into the attic and see where the TV signal goes next. The cable from the antenna and preamp runs across the attic to the other side of the house where I am now. It connects to this 8-port distribution amplifier that feed signals to various locations in the house. I wanted to minimize the use of splitters after many service calls while with Comcast, often to swap out a bad splitter. So now each cable runs directly from here to the point where it connects to a TV or tuner. But between the preamp and the distribution amp, I ended up with these two wall warts plugged into the wall. My kilowatt meter shows they each use 6 watts of power, or 12 watts, creating a vampire load. On closer inspection, both amplifiers required 15 volts DC. I have 12 volt DC at my solar battery bank. So I replaced these two vampire loads with one of these. This is an inexpensive LM2577 DC boost converter set to 15 volts output. I put the board into this little tiny project box with two type F connectors and a power connector you can see on top. I ran battery power to it and now that runs my TV signal distribution system on free solar power. It has worked well all year. I can't tell the difference between AC and DC power on the signal quality. As I found elsewhere, the DC power consumption is a lot less than the AC power consumption. In this case, 12 watts on AC, 3 to 4 watts on DC. It's no problem to run this power supply off my battery bank. It only takes 6 amp hours to run a whole day. So I've eliminated a 12 watt vampire load, that's 105 kilowatt hours per year. In a previous video, you'll see how I eliminated the 50 watt vampire load of the DirecTV equipment by sending that back to them. Granted, I'm using some power to replace that functionality, but I've improved in that area as well. I'll go into that in a little more detail later in this video. All my TVs have built-in ATSC tuners so they can receive the over-the-air channels just fine. Unlike cable or satellite, I can watch TV without having a set-top box. I also find the picture quality with over-the-air broadcasts is much better than cable or satellite. Digital TVs usually have built-in program information displays, but they are dependent on the broadcaster to send out the correct information, and the display of that information can vary from TV to TV and is fairly limited. This TV only shows what's on one channel for the next uh, half a day or so. I was used to the nice TV guide that you get on a cable or satellite TV set top box and I wanted The way I chose to do that was via PC based media center software. I set up some TV tuners both internal and external then installed Windows Media Center. After scanning for available channels and setting up the main server for the house, I get this nice TV guide screen. I can propagate this channel information to other PCs in the house automatically. I use a network attached storage or NAS device for recorded TV shows and media playback. I had an older Buffalo Terra Station NAS 
that was one terabyte in size and used about 55 watts of power. But I upgraded to a larger device, currently 12 upgradable to 20 terabytes that only uses 48 watts of power. Well, that is 18 watts more than the one terabyte direct TV DVR used. I can now use this NAS for other purposes as well. So before, I had 30 watts of DVR and 55 watts of NAS, and now I have 48 watts of combined NAS plus DVR functionality. My network TV tuner also uses power 24-7. It's listed as 5 volts at 1 amp. Since it runs off a small wall wart, I should, it should be easy to power off the battery bank with a DC step-down converter. With the subscription savings, I'm paying for this nice Synology NAS, as well as a new all-in-one PC I have set up as a smart TV. So, if you're thinking of cutting the cable, by all means, set up an antenna and see what sort of signals you get. I'm glad I took the time to research over-the-air TV and gradually transition myself into it. The last month of my satellite subscription, I hardly ever turned on the set-top box, watching mostly live or recorded TV instead. You will not be getting the exact same channels and shows as you did on cable or satellite. Much of the premium channel content is available by, via streaming services if that is a must-have. So far, I'm only using one streaming sports service that costs me less than $7 a month. Feel free to join the conversation in the comments section below. Be sure to rate and share this video and subscribe to this channel for future updates. Thanks for watching.